Hey everybody, my name is Danny Dumas and this is the Earning Title Podcast. Today is a follow-up to last podcast about stress. Uh, my friend Harold Love, he's a medical health professional, retired uh, police officer, and we uh, had a really good in-depth talk about stress and dealing with stress and managing stress. And this is a follow-up to that because one of the things he mentioned, uh, and we didn't go into much detail, was how important fitness is and how important uh, being healthy is, and specifically exercising, working out to mitigating the negative factors of stress. And we talked about, obviously, stress is a mental thing. It, it, it wears you down. It can cause you to have changes in behavior, but it is also very physical. And it's a good thing. Stre- the, our stress response is how we respond. It's the fight or flight. It's something bad happens, and we get our body prepares us physically to do something, to fight, to, f- uh, to flee, to, d- to do something. And um, the problem with today's you know modern man is that when you get – stressed out driving in your car because someone cut you off, you get this flood of, of of hormones, endorphins, cortisol, all these stress hormones, which is preparing you for action. And the only action you can do is, you know, either hit your horn, you know, give them the one finger wave or just suck it up. And that is not healthy. Right? We have these, these, these chemicals shouldn't be just sitting in our muscles, sitting in our bloodstream, just sitting there. They should be used through physical exertion. And when we don't do that, we get this buildup. Things like cortisol can be very damaging. Now it is a good thing. Cortisol is good. It's what we need to have a good physical response to physical stressors. But when we don't get to let that out, we get a build up and that causes all kinds of other problems. So today as that follow up, I'm going to cover uh, health and fitness. And this is probably a two, maybe a three part uh, podcast episode because I think it's so important. If we are dealing with stress and we all are, if you're living in this world and you have any responsibilities, you have some some level of stress in your life and fitness and being healthy and exercise is important. So I'm going to talk about exercising specifically today. And I break down, you know, fitness and exercising into two camps. One camp and both camps are just as important. In one camp, I think you should be able to move things, meaning lift them up, interact with this world in a physical way. Maybe that's your body weight. Maybe that's, uh, you know, you doing a pull up, a push up, a sit up. Maybe that's you picking up something off the ground, like a barbell, your kids. Maybe that is picking up a loved one and carrying them somewhere. Like, I think that's something we should uh, be able to do. I had a a small uh, medical emergency with a family member and I was very uh, proud is not the right word, but I was very thankful. I was able to pick that person up and move them physically, pick them off the floor and put them where they needed to go. That made me proud. You know, that was a good manly moment. So moving things, that's, that's one camp of fitness and it's very important. The second camp of fitness is to move yourself, meaning running or moving over long distance or maybe even just moving quickly. I think we need both. I think as men, we should have the ability to move as fast as we've ever done. Like we should be able to reach our peak speed, move quickly for at least one minute. Now, more would be better, right? To go all out for one, two, three minutes would be awesome. Now, the way the energy systems work in our body, we're really actually not designed to go at 100% for more than 30, 40 seconds. But that all out, you know, 80, 90% effort for several minutes, I think is really important. It is a skill. It is, oh my God, my house is on fire. I need to run in there, grab my kids, pick them up and take them out. Like that is in, that is what fitness is, right? It should be how we interact with the world. That's one, being able to go cardiovascularly all out for several minutes. The second one of the move part, moving yourself, is to move a long ways. I think it is a fundamentally DNA thing that humans are meant to move long distances. I think we're supposed to go for walks. Well, now, if you want to lose weight, I don't think walking is the best way to do it, but it is the best thing for your mental health. We should be walking Every single day. It's why that 10,000 step number has been pushed so much because we are better. We're healthier. We're mentally more stable when we get up and move. So we should be able to move fast and we should be able to move a long ways. We should be able to lift our body weight. We should be able to lift other people's body weight. We should be strong. So today we're going to talk about the strength side of the health and fitness uh, camp. 
in 2009, I, uh, I, as a firefighter, I became an officer and I realized that, uh, you know, I'm doing some research and study and, and I realized I'm responsible for the, the lives of the, the men and women that I'm going to lead. And I looked at the research and is what is going to kill myself or my fellow firefighters. And I want to try to prevent that. And the number one cause of death in the fire service is cardiac arrest, heart attacks, or some type of cardiac event during an emergency. So I thought, well, how do I mitigate that? I know I'll get in shape. So individually, I made a, uh, like a commitment that I'm going to be an in shape firefighter. And I wasn't really out of shape. And I've gone in up and down whether I was super healthy, not that healthy. But for the most part, I've been stayed in shape the last 24 years. Well, now I'm responsible. I said, well, you know what? I want to help my guys become healthy, to stay healthy, to stay in shape. How do I do that? I went and got my uh, license as a personal trainer. I took the class, I took the test, I passed. And then in order to kind of exercise that, I actually started a business where I did uh, a small group coaching where we would get together with 10 to 15 people, meet in a gym, we would work out for an hour. I did that for several years. I had some really great success. I helped um, people lose hundreds of pounds and it was awesome. So I got to develop this, uh, you know, I got to lots of sets and reps on helping people work out, helping people get in shape. And just yesterday, I had a friend reach out. He's like, I'm going to the gym. It's been a really long time. What should I do? What is the, you know, what is that first thing? And so the, the program I'm going to share with you is very basic. So if you're an advanced lifter, if, you're, if you have a very complex system where you go in and you got multiple body parts, it's chest, back, day, all that, this might be uh, elementary to you. And I hope you stay because there's probably going to be something you don't know, but this might be elementary, but I'm going to go very simple on a very, the most simple program I've seen that gave me personally, this is the program I, I followed to get stronger than I've ever been in my entire life. And the program is called five by five. Now there is a company called strong lifts that has created an app and really promoted this five by five workout, but it didn't start with an app. Although I recommend it, I used it, I have used it and I continue to use it in 1958. This guy named Reg Park he, a uh, bodybuilder, you know, real, real, real big dude. He eventually became a mentor of Arnold Schwarzenegger. He published a book about this five by five workout and the benefits of it. And this is a barbell workout. So if you're not familiar, dumbbells are individual weights that you put in your hands and they have weight. Usually there's a small bar with weights on either side. A barbell is a long bar, five, six, seven feet, depending on, uh, you know, what, what kind of bar you get. And there's a big collar on the end and you slide plates on the end and it's one big bar. That is a barbell. And all the exercises we're talking about have to deal with a barbell. So this is a barbell only workout. And it is, when we say five by five, what we're mentioning, what we're, what I mean is you're going to do five reps for five sets. So it's very simple. You're gonna, it's 25 movements for each exercise, five by five, five sets of five reps. What are the exercises? And this is the, I don't know if genius is the right word, but this is why this is awesome. There are only five exercises. That's it. You don't have, to, there's not 27 things you have to remember. It, it's, it's very simple. So there's two workouts. There's an A workout and a B workout. A workout is a back squat. A back squat is where you put the bar on your back and you lower the weight in your body down the goal is to be below parallel, meaning your hips are going to go below your knees, and then you stand up. That is a squat. You would do that five times. You would take one, two, or three-minute rest, depending on how heavy you're going. You would do that again five times. You do that for five sets. Then you are going to do a bench press. Bench press is where you're laying with your back on the bench, and you push the bar straight forward, five sets of five. Then you're going to do a bent row, which is... The bar is in front of you. You're leaning over maybe at like a 45 degree angle and you're pulling back towards your chest. So basically it's the opposite of the bench press. If the bench press is pushing, the row is pulling. So you're working the opposite muscle, five sets of five. That's workout number one or workout A. Workout B, very simple, back squat again. You're going to back squat every time you do the five by five. Then overhead press. So the bar is on your chest and you push it straight up overhead where in a bench you're pushing, you're laying on your back, you're pushing it straight away from your chest. This is you're pushing it over your head, five by five. And then the deadlift. The deadlift is just what it sounds. There's Imagine somebody's dead on the ground and you're picking them up from the ground. So this is the bar is at your uh, just above your uh, your shoes. 
right next to your shins. You stand up straight. Now, this is the one that's only that it is different. You're only doing one set of five reps with a deadlift because the back squat has a lot of the same um, muscles as the deadlift. So you only do one set of that at five for five reps. But there's a it is still kind of five by five, and I'll explain it. That is the workout. A, B, A, B, A, B, A, B, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. It's preferable that you have a day off in between. So a three days a week worked really good. Monday, Wednesday, Friday, you work out. So Tuesday, Thursday's a rest. Saturday, Sunday's a rest or an act of recovery, which might be go play basketball. Go walk with your kids outside. Do something fun. Start over. So that is the basics. So very simple. Five exercises, three days a week, A workout, B workout. Now, how much do you lift? When I started, I really had never done barbell workout at all. And so I, and I know I didn't want to hurt myself. And I actually had a little bit of concern because um, you hear things about squatting and deadlifting and how they're, you know, they're dangerous and doctors don't recommend them. And, you know, you're going to blow your spine out by deadlifting. And I don't want to say, I don't want to speak poorly of doctors, but not every doctor has knowledge of exercise. They have knowledge of medicine. And when they see people, they're always seeing people who are sick or damaged. And they come in, oh, my knee hurts. What were you doing? I was squatting. Well, obviously, squatting is dangerous. So don't squat. Well, that's not the truth. Squatting too much weight, too soon, too much, too fast. You know, all these things can cause danger. It's like driving. Driving, lots of people get in car accident, but we drive every day. Why? How can we justify the risk of driving when we know we can get in an accident? Well, do it safely. Drive within the speed limit, wear your seatbelt, look both ways before crossing the street. Like there's things that you can do to do it safely. And squatting, if you ha- if you have to sit down and sit on the toilet, you're squatting. So it can't be that dangerous. If you've ever picked something up off the ground or think you might ever have to pick something off the ground, that's deadlifting. Obviously, it can't be dangerous because we do it all the time, every day. It's a natural function of the body to move. So your doctor might tell you that, and maybe you have bad knees, and if you have some type of already pre-condition, uh, pre-existing condition, please go talk to your doctor, talk to your physical therapist, make sure it's good to go. But for the most part, a good physical therapist, a good doctor who is, understands uh, the body mechanics would never tell you don't squat, don't deadlift, because they are highly researched, very safe, as long as it's done correctly. And I'm going to well, I can't talk to you about the correct form. I can talk to you about the correct loading. I mean, how much weight you put on the bar and how quickly you progress. And this is part of the magic of the 5x5 five five strong lifts method. If you have zero experience, what I want you to do is just a 45-pound bar for everything but the deadlift. That's it. So it literally, you, you, most men, that even if you've never worked out, you can do five sets of five without without breaking a sweat, which means your first two, three weeks of working out, you might want to do something else to actually get an exercise because it's going to be very simple. But the goal is that as you progress, you get um, better at the form with really light weight. So you can, for the squat, you put the barbell on your back, you squat down as low as you can. Now, you might not have the mobility yet to squat below parallel, and that's okay. I don't want you to push it. Now, your knee's getting all wonky. Get as, as far down as you can. And then stand up straight, do that five times. You can that's a workout, forty-five pounds. Then you do your other ones with just forty-five pounds. Bench press, row, forty-five pounds. On the B workout, this is where it changes. You are going to add five pounds to the bar every time you work out for every lift, except the deadlift. The deadlift, you're actually going to start with um, a manageable load, light. You know, maybe you're going to put um, one hundred thirty-five pounds. If you've never worked out at all, maybe you're going to do like 90 pounds, something like that, because you, you're pretty, we're pretty strong. That's if you were going to like lift the most weight possible, it would be deadlift. So we do start with some weight on the deadlift, but make sure it's very light and you, you start, you start simple. So with everything, we just add five pounds. So the next day on, on workout B, when I'm doing my squats, I'm doing it with 50 pounds. So I've added five pounds. Then the next day I do it 55 60, 65, 70, you, you, you keep going and going, going. So you might do a week or two weeks where this is easy. And I don't want you to jump ahead. If you've never worked out before, 
think of this as like paying your dues. You have to kind of earn the weight on the bar. And it's kind of exciting. You can see it go up uh, quickly. You might not be getting even really that much stronger because the weight is not challenging yet, but you're improving your form. Um, if you have poor form, like you miss, like something feels weird, your legs aren't right, something, you're not going to hurt yourself because the weight is so light, but you're increasing, increasing, increasing. And then eventually you're going to get to a point like, okay, this is a workout where when you start, you might not have any rest between your five by five. Like you do five sets of five. You might do them in a row. You might do 25 back squats in a row. No big deal. But then you're going to get to a weight. Let's get a little heavier. Give yourself a one minute rest in between. As you, as you go, you want to, the goal is to not miss. The goal is to be rested enough that you can complete it without uh, a lack of form. If you start to have lack of form, that's when you stop and you, you, you've missed, you didn't get your five sets of five and that's okay. We have to have perfect form every time. This is not a race. You should be focused when you're lifting heavy weights. This should be the only thing on your mind. Like if you get under the bar, as you get heavier, say you're at, you know, 285 and this is going to be the most you've ever squatted. And you just got a phone call from your wife and I don't know, there's a water leak in your basement and you're stressed out about it. Don't squat. When you're lifting heavy weights, it should be the only thing on your mind. Doing it perfectly, you know, being mentally focused is really important. But you're going to just grow your lifts. And the awesome part about being a brand new person is your ability to increase the weight is amazing. The uh, the novice effect or the beginner effect is, is awesome because you can go linear. Most guys, if you've been working out for a year, two or three years, you, it might take you a year to add 10 pounds to your back squat because you've maxed out those initial gains. As you're gaining it as a new person, every single week you're getting stronger, stronger, stronger. And it's, it's so cool. Now, that doesn't go on forever. That effect goes away. But why, when you first start, it just, it's, it's an awesome feeling to know that every single week you've lifted more than you've ever lifted before. And, and really just, just dive into that. Enjoy that progression because, because eventually you miss. So what do you do when you miss? When you miss on a workout, meaning, you know, on, on you get to 225 on the back squat and you do four set or five sets and you're on your fifth set and you don't get all five, you get four instead of five. You just can't do that, la that fifth one. You're just not feeling it. No big deal. So you were at, uh, let's do 200 because math is easy. So you're at 200 pounds, you drop 20%. Excuse me, you drop 10%. So you're going to drop 20 pounds. So you're at 200, you missed, you didn't get five sets of five on the squat. You drop back down to 180, and you work your way back up. So it's going to take 180, 185, 190, 195, 200. So in five workouts, that could be two or three weeks, you're back up to where you were and you should have progressed and gotten stronger. Go, you get to 200, you do it, no problem. 205, 210, 215, 220, 230, you, you, you lose it somewhere else, you miss. Again, drop back down 20%, work your way back up. Now, when you get to working your way back up and you miss again, so you, you drop 20% or drop 10%, work your way back up to that weight, you dropped again. That is when the five by five set the, the theory behind it and the, the program stops for at least for that lift, you will have to do something different. It might be five by three, it might be five by two. You might have to switch up how many days you're squatting. You can't squat every day because you've gotten to the point where you no longer have linear growth and it's going to stagnate and it's going to take you. Now you have to train. Now you have to do some more things, but don't worry about that. You might get three months. You might get six months. You might get a year of linear growth and that's pretty cool. That is a, that's a cool thing. And that's the, that's the benefit of this system of it's progressive. You know exactly what to do. It's only five exercises and it's just so simple. Now, if you're six months in and you're starting to get bored and boredom is a real thing. And it is why something like CrossFit, I believe is very popular because it's different every day. It's varied. And there's some benefit to that mentally. It's, it's cool to do something varied. Getting strong though is a very, is a, is requires training. Now it can happen in random workouts and I'm not saying you can't ever have a random workout, but if you want to get as strong as possible, progressive overload is important. There's a couple other things that are important. 
you have to stress your body out, which is what progressive overload is, meaning you are lifting more weight than you have before or more reps or more something, but then you have to recover. We own, we don't get strong working out. We get strong working out and then recovering, becoming better, healing, uh, building more muscle, and then we're stronger. So you have to heal. Sometimes we get really addicted to that feeling of more, more this, more that. I, I'm stronger, bigger, better. And you are like, you know, three days a week. If I, if I got this strong in three days a week, what if I did four? What if I did five? What if I worked out every single day of the week? You will burn out. You will get hurt. And you'll be that person that goes to the doctor. He'll say, yep, deadlifting is super dangerous. Obviously, look at you hurt your back. So you have to listen to your body. You have to be okay with missing. Uh, when I was a younger man, I would get a little tweak in my back. I'm like, I'm going to work through it. Now, if as soon as I feel anything that feels a little weird, I stop. I'm like, yep, yeah, workout's done for the day. Yep, I'm not even going to try to to keep going because it felt weird. Or maybe I'm going to do something. I'm going to go walk on the treadmill for the rest of my you know 30 minutes that I had assigned to work out. You have to listen to yourself because if you don't, you can have injuries and injuries take time and time away from fitness, time away from working out, exercising will result in losses of fitness. There's no other way around it. If you're not consistently doing something, you will lose it. So it's much better to go slow, listen to your body, fully recover, and then keep growing. So that is what I would recommend. Now, there are some assistance exercises you can throw into the five by five. A lot of those are just body weight. Like say, you know, I really want to work on something that you, maybe you have a job that's physical and there's something you want to do to help uh, improve the muscles that you use for that job. Um, you know, some of the assistant workout that you can do to assist you in getting stronger would be uh, pull-ups, dips, um, uh, like skull crushers. Uh, and um, I'm going to link the uh, to the 5x5 website, the Stronglist 5x5 website. It's got everything you could possibly want. And most of it is free. I believe the app cost, but you do not need an app to do this plan because it's that simple. But if you want it to be, you know, them to tell you how much weight's the next week and to follow all that and to show you the assistant workouts, the Stronglist 5x5 app is worth it. I think I paid $4.99 or something. It was not expensive and uh, it was totally worth it. Go lift heavy weights. It's important. Stay tuned to part two, which is going to be moving, moving quickly and moving long distances. So this has been the Earn Your Title podcast. My name is Danny Dumas, and I will talk to you later.